Hey guys, welcome back. Today we are gonna be making some pork sausage. I'm gonna be doing breakfast sausage. We're working with both of the hams off of a hog that I shot very recently. Um, it's been aging for about, oh, give or take a week now. And um, part of it is actually missing because my mom's making a roast out of it, but we're gonna work with what we have. So first things first, here's what we got, nice fat piece. And we're gonna trim it up a little bit. So, just kind of section it off and get out any gristly stuff so that when we grind it and put it, make it into sausage, it's not chewy. Now, something that you want to pay attention for when you're doing this is these right here. These are glands. You want to make sure that those are cut out. You don't want to grind those or eat them. Um, they don't taste good. So cut those out of there. Oh, this is a good piece. And then I'm going to be cutting it into chunks about this big for the grinder, maybe a little bit bigger, maybe a little bit smaller. And I'm going to be adding some really good breakfast sausage flavoring that I actually got at Bass Pro last year during deer season. Um, I'd shot in some deer and wanted to test out making sausage with it. And everybody loved it so much that um, I actually made a ton of it and now I've never made it with pork, but I want to give it a go and see if it's better or equally as good. Sausage ever. My mom says it's the best sausage ever. My dad seriously asks me like daily, like, oh, do you got any more sausage? Cause they're out. Um, I make really good biscuits and gravy with it. Maybe I'll have to drop the recipe for that. If anybody likes biscuits and gravy, it's super easy too. It's like. Uh, you can do a blindfolded recipe. So I just wanted to come in close here and show you guys. Let me tap this. Ooh. How beautifully marbled this fat is on this piece of meat. Can you see? Ah, there it is. Look at that. Like this right here, this is primo pork. Wild hog. Okay. We've chopped it all up, got it nice and clean. Here's our meat. Beautiful. The next step is, one sec. Let me make sure you can see this. The next step is going to be seasoning. So, I believe when I did it last, I put, um, I started out by adding four tablespoons of this to, this is about, I'd give this around three, four-ish pounds of meat. So I think I did a tablespoon, a pound to start, and then I realized that I needed more, so I doubled that. So I'm gonna do two tablespoons per pound. So let's see, here's two, and we'll just call this four pounds for the, argument's sake. This is what I'm using. Breakfast sausage seasoning. I got it from, what is the brand? High Mountain Seasonings. I got it from Bass Pro. It was seriously like $7 and it's amazing. So now that we have added, I did eight tablespoons of sausage seasoning. I personally like it very strong. So that's why if you like it more on the mild to medium side, I would stick with the recommended dosage of, I believe it was four tablespoons. Now add a little bit of cold water, just a dash, and we're gonna mix all this up. Beautiful. Wow, this smells so good. 
this is gonna be some good sausage right here. Okay, now that that's nice and coated, we're gonna put it in the grinder. We're gonna run the bacon through once and the hog through once. I'm gonna do the hog first because I want the bacon to catch any bit of the seasoning that got dusted off from the hog. Now we're on to the fun part, putting together the grinder. I feel like every time I do it, I end up forgetting a step, so let's see how this goes. First things first, I like to grease it up with a little bit of cooking oil. It just helps it slide uh, more smoothly through there and makes the whole process a lot easier. And then I'm gonna do our blade as well. Doesn't have to be anything crazy. Now, when I put it together, I don't know, I mean, anybody who doesn't have a grinder, if you get one, it says it in the instructions, but I'm gonna put this on. Put that on there. Drop it in the hatch. On goes our grate. And there we go, we're set up. Typically I do it going this way, but since I'm videoing and the counter is too short um, width wise, I'm gonna try to spin it around and see what I can make happen here. I think this could, I think this is doable. All right. We've got the grinder all plugged in and you guys are gonna have a hard time hearing me over the sound of the grinder. So while I'm doing it, I might just speed up the grinding process um, when I'm editing. We'll see, but my mom has put um, the other roast in the oven. The, she put the shoulders and back straps and a little piece of one of the hams. It smells amazing and it's only been in there for like 30 minutes. So I can't wait to try that later tonight. But here's our uh, setup. We're gonna run this once through. We're gonna put it to the side. We're gonna run the bacon once through. We're gonna put it to the side. We're gonna mix the bacon and the ground meat and then we're gonna run it through the grinder one last time and then we're ready to wrap. We've got our pork all ground. Now we're time to now it's time to just simply do our bacon. This takes a really short amount of time because there's not a lot, so bacon. Here's our ground bacon. Now what we're gonna do is in our bacon with our pork meat. I do a little bit at a time, that way it's pretty evenly mixed in there. Well, I know what I'm making this upcoming weekend, biscuits and gravy. Maybe I'll do a live on making biscuits and gravy since it's such an easy cook. Drop a comment if you think doing a live is a good idea on biscuits and gravy for like a, um, a weekend breakfast thing. What I do is I make the biscuits and gravy and then top it with, it's super unhealthy by the way, this doesn't happen often. So uh, top it with a over easy egg and then bacon so that it's like a biscuits and gravy eggs benedict. So good. But definitely not something you want to eat all the time. Now, last but not least in our grinding process, we're going to take the bacon mixed 
with the pork and we're gonna grind it one last time just so it's nice and smooth. We are done, we as in me and you, are done grinding this and check it out. Oh my gosh, that is beautiful in the butchering world. So don't go anywhere because the fun part is yet to come. We're gonna wrap this thing up and get it ready for the freezer. So don't miss out on that because I have a little extra tip that you might not know of that helps keep it in the freezer for months and months at a clip. So stay tuned. Okay, here's where we're gonna have some fun. We've got our meat, we've got our tape, clean wrap, and last but not least, freezer paper. Now, I don't know where you guys live in the world, but we have Publix here. My Publix doesn't have freezer paper, it has everything else, but Winn-Dixie does. So if you have trouble finding it, go to Winn-Dixie. Now, I have been processing my own animals that um, I've hunted forever, like forever. And that was a big thing. My dad taught me how to clean them from a very young age, even when before I started hunting, that's probably gonna be loud. Even before I started hunting, he always had me assist him, even like teaching me like just to hold the bag when I was super little. So I'd like to think that I've become an expert in my own eyes at this. Um, everybody has a little bit different way of doing it, but I happen to like the way I do it. And if you do it a different way that you think would be helpful, go ahead and drop a comment and I'll look into it. But this way seems to be the secret. We're gonna get our cling wrap out, put it here, leave it attached. So for this, I'm gonna do two different sizings. I'm gonna do smaller and bigger. The bigger one's gonna be for my whole family. That way um, I don't have to bring like three packs over for one um, breakfast sitting. So this is gonna be my smaller one here. <coughs> Just like this. Okay. I'll show you guys in just a sec what that looks like. Then I'm gonna take my cling wrap over, over, just like this, and then squish it in together and roll it. This, for whatever reason, prevents freezer burn by like a million times. It works so great for keeping stuff in the freezer. So. Here's what we got. That's our small one. Next step is gonna be, I typically wrap them all like this and then wrap them all like this, but just for showing you guys purposes, I'm gonna go ahead and do this one. Here we have our freezer paper. As you can see, I have the shiny side facing up and then here's the non shiny side. That's what you're gonna want the outside of your packaging to be. So put it here like this. Make sure that you squish it in nice and tight for sealing purposes. And then I fold it over this way. And then I try to keep it, one second, the crinkle in. As tight as possible. That way you get a really tight seal on your wrap. No air gets in, whatever. Just keeps the meat safer, so nice and tight. Bam. Now for our tape. I'm happy to say that I personally have never had to take an animal to the processor. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but I do enjoy doing this on my own and it makes it nice that I know how to. So it's pretty simple stuff. It, the only time consuming part, the only, the only part that isn't fun is cleaning the grinder after. That part I could do without. All right. Now we've got our meat, you're gonna wanna label it. So I do, let's do breakfast. Sausage. And then we'll do our, I'm just gonna do the month. So we are in 
April, we're closer to May. I'll just write May, so we'll do 05. And the date is 2020. So, so that's that. We've got our breakfast sausage labeled and ready to go into the freezer. And I am so blessed to be able to say that we eat pretty much all off of the land when it comes to our protein part of the meals because we have deer, hogs, turkeys, ducks, doves, lobster, fish, everything you could ask for pretty much in our freezer. We don't even have to go to the grocery store and buy meat. Now, <laughs> on the, uh, the other side, not to say that if we've saved any money because hunting does cost a lot of money if you put the time into it and energy and the right gear and stuff. But it's nice to know where your meat came from, exactly how it was handled, exactly how it was processed. And there's no second guessing on, you know, what's in this meat or was it iced right? Was it dealt with properly? Yes, 100%. This is trustworthy. I actually, anybody who knows me, I like to eat my steaks rare as can be. I will eat venison pretty, I've actually eaten, oh no, we won't go there, but I would pretty much eat venison 99% raw because of how well I know that it's been dealt with if it's mine. So that's that and uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in and watching. Drop a comment, let me know if you process your own animals or if it's something that you've thought about doing and just weren't sure of you know what to do with it. Um, any other suggestions that you have for the next video, whatever you guys want to see, let me know. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you guys probably the next time I'll see you is when I'm doing a live cooking this bad boy in the kitchen. So, biscuits and gravy coming up. See you guys then.